Welcome to the Startup Grind. First of all, welcome all to Sardab Lab. This is the first ever Startup Grind event in Kuwait. Startup Grind is a global network of communities that encourage each community to learn from the experience of local uh, entrepreneurs, such as Mr. Mohammed Jafar. So we can learn from his experiences and take shortcuts by learning from the mistakes that he's made rather than repeat the same mistakes. And what I really like about Startup Grind is that their va values focus on building a community, focus on giving rather than taking, on building relationships rather than networking in a shallow respect, and in helping others rather just, than just focusing on helping yourself. So it's about uh, an, a mutual exchange of uh, ideas, experiences, and so on. So we all want to help each other building uh, better services and better businesses. Uh, my name is Haider Al Musawi, and I'm a co-founder uh, of uh, Sirdab Lab. And uh, Sirdab Lab is a startup hub that aims to help uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners in every stage of their business. So, if you just have an idea and you want to, to start something, we'll help you out. If you if you want uh, to network or build relationships with people within your field, or maybe you have a tech startup that relates to restaurants, so you have to speak to restaurant uh, owners to know exactly <coughs> the kinds of services they would want from a, a tech platform. But don't compete with Talibat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, today I selected a set of uh, questions. I hope they're relevant uh, to your experiences, but at the end you're gonna have a chance to ask your own questions. Uh, Mohammed Jafar is the current CEO of uh, Talibat. So he didn't uh, build the business no. from the beginning. He acquired it at a later stage. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, let's begin. Uh, how did you find out about Talabat and what made you want to acquire it? Sarah, we knew, I knew about Talabat from the beginning um, when it first started in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, but I lived in England then, most of my life. So I moved back to Kuwait in, uh, in the, the, end of, the end of 2004. Uh, of course, who doesn't like to order from uh, uh, restaurants? So when I heard, first heard about Talabat, I was uh, fascinated really. Like, wow, this is a really amazing idea. You order online, the list of restaurants, you see the pictures and all that. And it's quite easy with three, four steps and your uh, order comes. So I was extremely, any. Very proud of these Kuwaiti guys that uh, started this business. How I got to know it more when I started, at first I worked in the bank. I worked in Gulf Bank, corporate banking, uh, for about four years. And uh, when I decided to do my own business, I opened a small restaurant called The Kitchen. Uh, the Kitchen is a s basically a small restaurant, the Shi'b al-Bahri, uh, delivery, f uh, six staff members I started with. And I needed to sell for 150 KD per day to break even. My sales for the first three months were around 30 to 40 KD per day. So I was uh, pulling my head out, wanted to cry, I made the wrong decision, I should have uh, closed the restaurant down, wasted 60,000 KD for my parents' money. Uh, then I said, no, I have to keep on going. So I called Abdul Aziz who was the managing partner back then. Okay. And I told Abdul Aziz, uh, I want to join Talabat. But I wasn't convinced with the idea of paying a fee and registration fees and all that. So Abdul Aziz told me, Mohammed, it's quite simple actually. You just, you pay, but you have a period of a few months. If you're not satisfied, we give you all your money back. I said, wow, it's perfect. So I have, uh, literally, there's nothing yeah. for me to lose. There's nothing. So I joined uh, Talabat. And my first day was, I sold for 420 KD. Wow. So from 30 to 40 KD to 420. And I thought, that's it. This is the jackpot. Uh, and then, well, how did you agree to acquire? Of course, this was a long uh, process. Just, I would just like to talk about something. Yani, uh, I always wanted to do my own business since uh, childhood. However, I needed to get the experience. Uh, and I was in a boarding school in England, and then I did my university in England. 
I studied economics, uh, but to be honest, I had no idea what I wanted to do, which field to go into. So uh, my father, Allah, he said, that's if you're so confused like that, I'm going to give you a job somewhere. So he helped me and I got a job in corporate banking and Gulf Bank. Now, why did I stay for four years in Gulf Bank? It's because uh, I needed to get the experience. I needed to feel I can stand on my own two feet. Oh. So after getting the experience, I started the small restaurant, the kitchen. Now, from the kitchen, what happened? Uh, I got the, I saw what Talawat did. So I had to have that, that um, confidence. Oh. Uh, if I didn't have that experience in the bank, out of no way made a bid to, uh, to purchase Talawat. Because I knew it was, it was going to be uh, a very difficult journey. Okay. And it is a difficult journey because it's uh, a difficult industry to be in, but very exciting. Uh, you have to work very hard every single day. You can't slack off, uh, especially when the business grows, you'll see more problems, which we'll talk about later on. Yeah. So uh, what specifically from your business experiences helped you in acquiring uh, Talibat and gave you the confidence that you'll be able to, uh, well, to run Talibat? Well, working in corporate banking is very important because what is corporate banking basically? You give facilities to companies. So all day I used to look at companies, study them and give them facilities. So for me to give them money from the bank's money, uh, I have to uh, understand them inside out. So uh, that gave me exposure to so many different kind of industries. Uh, getting exposure to so many kinds of industries will uh, give you ideas. Okay. So when I joined with the kitchen of Talabat, I was just amazed. It's like, Aqub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm living off Talabat. Yeah. So I said, yeah, it's, uh, it's must be. I, ha I had to uh, somehow have a part in it. Have a part in it. Yeah. Okay. So we, we approached the uh, shareholders then. There were three of them, Khalid Al-Atabi, the founder, Abdul Aziz al and uh, Bishr Bishr. And Abdul Aziz al was the uh, managing partner and he was managing uh, the business. Okay. And uh, one thing I hear a lot uh, with people that work in uh, tech startups, or yeah. they have an idea for an uh, app, yeah. they always say, but we don't have any experience in tech startups. And your background isn't in IT. I have so zero IT experience. Huh? Okay. And I still have zero IT experience. Okay, yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, it's different. See, uh, running a business is the same for any business in any industry. Few fundamentals which have to be uh, in any business. Now, getting, I got experience uh, in the bank. Now. However, so it was only four years of experience, it's not, the, it's not say 20 years of experience. So when I moved into the restaurant industry, it was starting from level zero, really. Uh, when moving into Talabat, it's starting from level zero. However, the fundamentals are there of how to manage a business and how to take it from point A to point B, from point B to point C, and so on and so forth. Yes. Uh, but IT experience, I have zero, and still. However, I, alhamdulillah, I, I got the experience of how to take a business from one level to another. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll uh, cover some questions about yeah. building the yeah. team and depending on sure. uh, a team. Uh, but uh, one thing that uh, I see to, uh, seems to be overlooked, uh, a lot of uh, resources, they provide technical expertise or business yeah. advice, but they overlook that many entrepreneurs, they face a lot of emotional struggles. Yeah. So what was the inner conflicts or struggles you were facing in the early days and that you continue to face till today? There's a lot of struggles, to be honest. Uh, the most difficult thing uh, in running any business is how to get people, or s basically, how to get your team to work as passionately as you. And that's very, very difficult. So you own the business, you put the money, you work the 14, 15 hours every day, and how to convince now, how to make your team do the same. That's the struggle. Okay. That's very, very difficult. Uh, honesty also. It's very difficult. How to get honest, hard-working stuff. That's, again, a struggle which every business owner or any person who has a business will face every single day. Okay. So, however, uh, all you have to do is work hard, uh, lead by example. Leading mm. by example is very, very important. Be fair to people. Don't mistreat them. Uh, don't abuse them. Uh, mm. so, so you, you're touching on another issue that yeah. I wanted to ask about is th uh, the corporate culture. Yeah. How do you make sure that the values that you believe in get transmitted to, the, to your uh, employees? Um, we can ask your employees. And the good guy Khalid Al Umar, he can talk a lot about that. Uh, uh, 
يو هاف تو اتس ابوت ليدنج ماي اكزامبل يعني م- انا الحين عندي بزنس وانا احب البزنس اي لاف ذس بزنس زين هاو كان اي تيل ذس جاي اند ذس جاي اند ذس جاي ورك هارد اوكي تيل مي ورك هارد تيل مي اوكي سير بس ذن هي ويل سلاك اوف هير سلاك اوف ذير اتس ابوت تريننج هيم فيرست يا كرييتنج فور هيم ذا رايت انفايرمنت اف يو كرييت ذا رايت انفايرمنت يو هيلب هيم تو اكسل Uh, but, sorry, uh, because, yeah, 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 because I, I want uh, aspiring entrepreneurs to know, like, yeah. to learn from your experiences. Sure. Uh, so, what does the right environment look like? First of all, you have to treat people the same. Mm. You can't treat a staff member in a certain way and another staff member in a method. I like this guy, so I'll treat him better. Mm. Uh, this guy is. Uh, She's a woman and he's a man. Now give the man the promotion. Woman can't handle it. You can't mm-hmm. discriminate in that sense. Yeah. You can't discriminate, well, uh, he's, uh, he's this color, he's that color. He's that background, he's that. So you have to treat people yeah. the same. And you have to see talent and uh, really f- and you roll up the sleeve and uh, work. So uh, doing this uh, will keep people happy. So they'll know that, well, uh, they have a chance. Everybody has a chance to, uh, to move up. Now, you have to also reward. If somebody does well, you have to tell him well done and mm. give him a reward. If someone does something wrong, he has to be penalized. Oh, now, what does penalized mean? Do you go and uh, beat him up or do you go fire him from day one? No, you have to do it as per stages. Mm. So you have to be fair to people, you have to give people a chance. Uh, this, any company, the number one asset is the stuff. Yeah. It's nothing else. It's the people. Yeah. Meaning a company has these group of people It will go up. They, it loses a few of them, it will start to diminish. Mm. So uh, a team is always the number one. And you have to treat them fairly and give them, uh, they have to feel they're growing with you. So you, method, you buy the businesses this big and you're paying this much salaries. Now when the business becomes this big, you have to pay them this much salaries mm. to keep them. Uh, okay. This is of course one of the, uh, so pay is one of them, treating them fairly is another, training them is third. Uh, giving them the, f- the right facilities in terms of working space and uh, Uh, systems and so on and so forth. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, I know uh, uh, Talibat likes to, uh, doesn't like to outsource. Everything is done in-house. Everything in-house, yeah. yeah. What's the yeah. rationale behind that? Why no, did you choose? Actually, yeah. because see, when I first, we, when we first acquired Talibat, um, I want to just tell you about a quick story about yeah. how we acquired Talibat. So I, I went to uh, Abdul Aziz uh, after a few months of uh, the kitchen doing very well on Talibat. I said, Abdul Aziz, uh, I would like to uh, speak to you about something. So I went and I met him in his office. He said, uh, I said, Abdul Aziz, I want to join you in Talabat. He says, what do you mean join us? I said, yani, I want to like to be part of the Talabat team. He said, no way. I said, why? He goes, are we happy? We have uh, an, uh, a chicken that's giving us golden eggs and we don't know more partners. Thank you very much. I said, Abdul Halal, yani, consider it. Yeah. I am your relative. I'm your friend. We play football every week. Yani. <laughs> let's uh, let's have uh, let's have uh, shisma. That let's must have count for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> let's have. Galim Muhammad, to be honest, uh, please close the subject. There's no chance we're going to sell the business because you you beat him at a previous football game. <laughs> yeah, always beat him. So he's a good player. He's <laughs> That's better why. Than me. <laughs> yeah, he's better than me. So we st- uh, honestly, I was pretty upset that uh, that night. I said, never give up. حنيت عليه مرة ثانية. ناقدونهم. ها عبد العزيز. Later on. ها عبد العزيز قال لي محمد ترى انت خلاص يعني يور نوينغ مي يعني ستوب نو مور طلبات از نوت فور سيل سبحان الله فيو مانث ليتر اي جيت ا كول فروم عبد العزيز اتس لايك محمد ليتس توك هذه يا الاحساس فيلينغ ميبي ذيس از ذا مومنت سو اي سيد وي ونت اند اي سيد اوكي ريمبر ذات مومنت يو تول مي وان باي ليتس ديسكاس ات اتس ا جريت سو وي ستارتد فروم ذير Now, the process was very, very difficult, actually, the acquiring. And for many moments, I thought the deal was lost and gone. Uh, of course, the first thing we did, he said, we want to sell the business. However, the business is not going to be cheap. Uh, we want a lot of money for it. I said, no problem. I have to do my homework. Do I have, back then, did I have enough experience to do this due diligence by myself? Absolutely not. Mm. So I went and started, I got the right team with me. To do, to do the due diligence. We signed an NDA and we started to, to uh, get information about Talabat. So these are people that you know or a service that you acquired? No, no, some of them I knew and okay. some of them I got, uh, basically, okay. I got basically certain people that have that experience. However, it was still very difficult. How many businesses, e-businesses, traded hands back in 2009? Not many. Mm. Now in 2014, there's a, lot, there's a few, so it's easier to evaluate. So it's very difficult to evaluate. 
And Abdul Aziz from day one, he goes, Muhammad, we want this much. A ridiculously high number. And I said, that's How ridiculous? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said, my goodness, and he, uh, I think the deal is gone. خلاص. How am I going to go back and tell my father, Abdul Aziz wants X amount of KD for a business. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Uh, for a business that uh, had seven employees and they had an office um, like this, the size of half of this room, exactly. Uh, and it looked like a sweatshop, the office. Well, that's made it even more difficult. My father said, I would like to go see that office. I took my father to see that office and I was like, <laughs> it was a, a hell for me. Uh, however, Abdul Aziz is professional. We did things in the right way. And we started to uh, do our due diligence. However, there's a six months later after, I'm not gonna talk about more about this subject because it's a long story oh. just about this. Six months later, we, had, we managed to acquire the business uh, on the 1st of January, 2010. Your new, year, new Year's Day. Oh, nice. Yeah. New beginnings. Yeah. So uh, you said that uh, your family helped you in acquiring yeah. Talabat. Of course. So, uh, uh, a lot of people, I think, overlook the the possibility of getting funding or support from their family. Yeah. Who were the people that you depended on uh, in acquiring uh, Talabat and, uh, and growing Talabat? Of course, very good question. I mean, Anna, I'm, I was a young man back then. Uh, of course, I, don't, I didn't have those funds uh, to acquire a business of that size. So I went to my father, I said, uh, there is an opportunity here. He said, what is it? I said, it's a business called Talabat.com. Uh, back then it was with a six. So he asked me, why doesn't it have a T? Why is it not with a T? I said, well, it's a very one of those first questions I'm going to ask him. And why is it not with a T? Uh, and يعني, he said, how much do they want for it? I said, this much. He said, what? But my father is a professional. He has, uh, he has run many, many businesses in his career. And he had the confidence in me, given that I proved myself to him. Because say, I worked. Uh, for four, uh, four years in corporate banking. And since the age of 12, I used to, my father used to send me every summer to work. Mm. I didn't have summer holidays. So I went, my first, I mean, my first ever job was working in Mesilla Beach Hotel, uh, the old Mesilla Beach Hotel. Oh, wow. uh, and my first thing they gave me to do was to clean the bathrooms. I was the age of 12. Mm. So I said to my father, Dad, what exactly am I gonna learn from cleaning a bathroom? He says, when you get older, you'll know. So I did all kinds of jobs. The following summer, I, uh, I worked in Kuwait Dairy Company. And the first thing they gave me was to milk the, the cows. Sounds so like I, I, did, I did all kinds of jobs, really. That sounds like child abuse. <laughs> Do you have anyone from human rights? Uh, and the following year, my father sent me to Sharjah, and I worked in a hotel there. And then he sent me to Riyadh, and then sent me to Yambu. So not the most exotic places. Mm. But, but <laughs> uh, however, I, I got a lot of experience. Uh, now, this gives confidence, and then I had mm. to, my father had to believe in my abilities. Uh, however, is it success guaranteed? Absolutely not. Mm. Nothing is guaranteed in life. What's guaranteed is that you roll up your sleeve and work hard. Allah mm. So yes. that's how, with the confidence my father had in me, I did my due diligence, I went through it in the right steps. And then Abdul Aziz, the first price we gave him was a lot lower than the asking price he said. He said, I wanted X. I said, we gave him Y. He said, and he got upset. He said, that's mm. it, the deal is over. And I said, well, the reason I did not give you a higher value is because you did not disclose all your numbers. So automatically, I had to d discount uh, things I don't know about. So he said, okay, if I give you everything, what guarantee do I have that you don't go and open another business to compete with Talabat? I said, there is absolutely no guarantee. If I was any, a person with no ethics, if I was, uh, if I didn't care about my name and my family's name, with terbiya oh. I'll exactly, I'll just exactly yeah. take all the notes from you and just go and replicate and do another business. Because literally during that process, I got all the know-how mm. during those six months. Kill she an talabat, how talabat works, the quality of the staff. كل عندي صار. However, of course, ethics here is very important. So money is not everything in life. And number two, it was very difficult to compete with Talabat even back then. And back then, Talabat had 720, 730 orders per day uh, and had a name. People loved Talabat. It was a Kuwaiti business started by youth. Uh, coming and competing with it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make business sense. So I, what makes sense is to acquire this business and build on it. Mm, so yeah. I, I, did the, I did my homework. I convinced my father. 
uh, it was very difficult to get the money for him to invest that sort of money uh, because simply the company had nothing. It was an office, really, guys. This size of the half of this room, and it had uh, old desks, old machines that kept crashing all the time, uh, old broken chairs, some of them with only one arm. Uh, and it's that kind of uh, environment. However, the guys that were there loved Talabat. The owners loved Talabat, and they were working very, very hard. And Talabat was growing very, very fast. And back then, a small restaurant like the kitchen was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala living off Talabat. Mm. So it's, it was it was like a diamond that needed just to be polished for it to, to really be worth something. Yeah, very nice. So confidence is the issue here. Nice. Uh, and uh, what do you look for in employees? And uh, where do you find them? Um, the, the most important thing, if you, if you, uh, it's very difficult to get someone who is who's قوي, who's strong, right, yeah. Amin, who's uh, trustworthy. Exactly, trustworthy. Yeah. You get a lot of people that are strong but not trustworthy. You get a lot of people trustworthy who are not strong. It's about getting these two together, uh, and it's about getting people that. How can I say? Treat this business like it is their own business. For example, when I used to work for the bank, I used to, I never won my life left at 3.30. The bank was from 7.30 uh, in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. So one of my friends, Yali Marra, does, does your father or grandfather own Gulf Bank? I said, no. So why are you working like this? I said, I didn't understand the question. It was like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, well, every day you're leaving at 6.37. What? Why? I said, because I wanted to learn. It's because I want to move up the chain fast. Mm. I wanted to utilize these four years to the maximum. So I worked when I was in Gulf Bank as if the bank was my own. Mm. I didn't even have one cent in it. Mm. But I worked as if it was my own bank. So it's finding people that work for the business like it's their own business is very difficult. Yeah. Not easy. However, there are, we do have a few people like that in, my, in, in Talabat. And inshallah in the future we'll have more. So you guys make a better uh, application and a better website. Nice. Uh, and uh, are there any people that you consider to be your mentors? And what kind of lessons have you learned from them? Yeah, and of course, yani, and, uh, my two grandfathers and my father are my first mentors. And, uh, my grandfather, Khalid Jafar, from my father's side, uh, and he was the first Kuwaiti ambassador in London, ambassador in the United States and France. And, uh, you know, they came from the time, well, I am a sur with Kuwait, and, and the houses were made of mud. Uh, and Kuwaitis were poor back then. Mm -hmm. You only had a few uh, wealthy families. Most of the Kuwaiti families back in the 19, uh, you're talking about in the 19, 14, 1915, right after the First World War, Kuwait was poor. Mm. People were fishermen, or they were عندهم uh, غنم, or you know, يبيعون yeah. That's 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 what Kuwait. We had, of course, we had a few wealthy families, and the rest were working class Kuwaitis. Yeah. So he worked extremely hard, and he used to have uh, two or three jobs. So he used to, my father said he used to leave at five, five thirty a.m. in the morning, Salat al and comes back home at midnight every single day. Now, my other grandfather from my mom's side, Barak al-Hasawi, that's the shaykh. Barak al-Hasawi, he was born a poor, a poor man. Yeah. He made himself. Yeah. Uh, he worked very, very hard. To make. So my, these are my mentors, of course, because I grew up and I saw these two figureheads uh, in front of me. Yeah. So I always wanted to have... To these are to the be, examples you aspire uh, definitely, to Definitely, of course. Yeah. And, and alhamdulillah, I was yani, fortunate to have uh, two grandparents uh, like that. Of course, my father. My father, Allah uh, he uh, is a, a very hard working man. Mm. Uh, my father lived, uh, like me, most of his life in, in, uh, in a boarding school and in UK, he lived right. in America. So ethics is, uh, to him is very important. So he taught me about ethics. So these three figureheads, uh, looking at them always, definitely made me want to be like them. Mm. Of course, طبعًا, in Kuwait, there's a lot of people in my age and older who are very successful in Kuwait around the world and you always look up to them but definitely okay nice so it's mostly the work ethic that uh, of course that you and work ethic <coughs> comes from an early age you have to uh, back then when I was a kid at the age of 12 and having to wake up every morning to go work and in the hotel and, and all that 
uh, it was, wasn't pleasant then. However, looking at it now, I said, this is the best thing my father did for me. Mm. He sent me to work in those uh, companies, those banks, those dairy farms. Uh, now I appreciate it. Now I know how it is. Back then, of course, I used to moan all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what does a regular day in your life and your work life look like today? And I wake up every early morning. I go to the fajr and I don't sleep. Uh, so I'm, I'm up around 4.30. Uh, I leave the house around 8 uh, to go to work. I'm, on, I'm in the office around 8.30, 8.45. And uh, we stay long hours. I like that. I can study at the evening and the evening and the evening and the evening and the evening. You have to. You have to. But what does the day involve? Is it meetings? Is it uh, redesigning the app? Uh, Negotiating yeah. deals? It's, yeah, it's all that. Meetings, uh, meet, talking to staff, talking to our offices in the GCC. As in Talabat now is in six countries. Uh, running a business in six countries is very difficult. Uh, difficult because mo they're not under your eye all the time. They're not under you, so you have to keep traveling to them, keep calling them to follow up. Following up with them is very tiresome. Uh, it's not easy at all. Uh, it stresses you up a lot, Yanni. A lot of uh, shouting, but it's good shouting, not, not uh, shouting. I mean, to an extent, the staff will hate you. You don't hate me, guys, right? Huh? Do you hold a grudge? <laughs> <laughs> so it's that kind of, um, it's a full day. Yeah, and it's yeah. Honestly, it's a full day that just goes by, flies by, without me feeling it. But it's a dream. Oh. And, uh, I'm living a dream every day, alhamdulillah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and um, you said uh, till, uh, till now you don't know much about uh, IT. No. Uh, what are the things that you still don't feel comfortable with and you depend on your staff to take over? Uh, and I, you asked me a question which I didn't answer. He said, why did you outsource? Why uh, do why you not outsource? Yes. Uh, well, so th when we entered Talabat, we had no idea how basically Talabat works. So we had to really make all the, take all those baby steps and all that. And, and the current, the old stuff of Talabat, I mean, I remember what they had a, the, the manager back then. He was like, when I heard that Abdul Aziz was selling Talabat to you, I cried. And I said, oh, why? He goes, like, I had no idea how you're going to take this business. I thought, that's it. Abdul Aziz was doing, taking the business. He was doing well. And this guy, Muhammad Jafar, is going to crash it down. Mm. Uh, and I said, well, uh, and, yeah, this was right in the beginning. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, we didn't know. So we said, OK, let's outsource the application. Back then, we had only websites. There was no iPhone mm. app, no Android app. And the trend of the apps was uh, on the rise. So we made that big mistake of having to say, OK, let's outsource to companies so, to, so that they can give us the best indi industry practice. Mm. Even though Talabat had engineers that can do that job. We mm. said, no, no, let's not give them the chance. Let's give a chance to these guys who will take our money to outsource, the, uh, outsource that. No. Can, and that was a huge disaster. And we outsourced the website, a new website. We are mm -hmm. sort of the application, and it was a complete disaster. It was a disaster. Uh, in what right? sense? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you now. It wasn't a disaster in terms of these guys didn't know what they were doing. No, they knew. The companies that were working, they knew. However, they were not honest. Mm. See, honesty is a very important word. Uh, you have to do things and, and not lie to people. I don't like anyone that lies to me. Just be honest. Say the truth. You're going to be delayed? Say, I'm going to be delayed. Don't tell me tomorrow and then day after. And then. Say, uh, sorry, I need a month more. Mm. Sorry, I made a mistake. I need to rectify it. But going around in circles, so I'm not used to it. I came from Europe and people were very straight there and very honest. Yeah. Uh, I found it very difficult. Uh, so we ended up pulling the projects. And, and the guys were threatened us. He's like, all right, we're not going to give you the source code. So I said, excuse me? He goes, well, we're not going to give you. So, but we said we paid money. So I said, no. So we ended up doing a settlement with them. And we ended up paying them you know, most of their packages. Oh. However, we, when we ended up taking back what they have done, we realized that they've only done around 10 to 15% of the work. Oh. So we started really from, you can say, level zero again. Oh. And, we w and we had, um, that was the first year we had, we sponsored the Rodan tournament, okay. if you guys remember. Now, sponsoring the Rodan tournament was a big gamble for us because we said sp sponsoring was a lot of we had to pay around 45,000 KD for a small business like Talabat. However, we, we said we have to associate Talabat with the other big companies. 
And back then, Tarbat was very small. And the Ramadan, uh, that was in the year 2011, was in August, if I'm not, was not mistaken. And when we pulled the project, it was in June, I believe, end of May towards the June. So we had eight weeks to do a website and an iPhone app. Now, Alhamdulillah, we have a door in getting, knowing Ma'dan How do I know if somebody is good or not when, it, when you put him in the corner and you see how does he fight? And we have, and we had two guys who literally worked for seven days a week, 18 hours per day, for eight oh. weeks to complete the new design. Because our target was to launch before the tournament. tournament yeah. Because the tournament was going to give us a lot of exposure, and I wanted this exposure to come to the new Talabat, not the old Talabat. And if you guys remember, we, we, we ran for a period of time, the old Talabat and the new Talabat together. Uh, uh -huh. And then once we saw people are happy with the new one, we canceled the old one. Okay. Yeah, you had the chance to switch, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah. you remember yeah. that. Uh, so outsourcing for us is very difficult. However, I'm not saying outsourcing as, a f as an idea is bad. No, uh, if, if sometimes you cannot afford to have your own staff and pay them a salary and indemnity, so you have to outsource. However, make sure that you follow up, and it helps if you're an IT background. Mm. If I'm an IT person and I outsource it to another IT guy, he can't uh, uh, fool me. Because I know what he's talking about. So uh, after that moment, we never outsourced anything and we do everything in house. And a okay. business like Talabat, it needs it. Okay. It keeps quality uh, consistent and. Uh, nice. But uh, and then uh, who do you, uh, how do you depend on your team for the things that you're weak at? In terms of weak at? In uh, terms uh, of what? For example, IT. Yeah. Uh, if you don't understand IT, uh, you got someone who you can depend on. Absolutely. What are other uh, areas uh, of the business? Thank God, now when we bought Talabat, Talabat had an employee. It had one IT engineer. But Rayal. Rayal, mm. Rayal, this guy was someone you can depend on. So I said, my friend, what exactly do you need? We want to do everything in-house. So we have to build. So we hired another IT person. And this other IT became two. And now, alhamdulillah, we have more than 20 IT uh, engineers. Wow. Uh, only in Kuwait? Or in Kuwait. Or no, oh. our IT department is in Kuwait. Only. Okay, okay. We don't have the one with our, our other functions are in the GCC, like operations, sales, and admin and HR. Okay, nice. Uh, what are the, uh, first of all, what was the reason for going to the GCC? What was the main reason you wanted yeah. to expand regionally? Of course, yeah, Kuwait is already doing well. Uh, in Kuwait, 700 orders and, and increasing. Uh, back then, back in 2010. Uh, going to the GCC was a huge challenge. Mm. Because, a challenge for me, because it was starting from level zero for me. Okay. See, when you buy a business that, which was already six years old, it's the hard, all that, so to say, that donkey work in the beginning has been done. So you really just build on it and take it up forward. However, when we started in the GCC, we started from level zero. Uh, so sorry, it was more of a, yeah. of a, I wanted to challenge myself. Plus, I believed if Talabat was successful in Kuwait, it will be inshallah successful in every GCC country. Uh, you chose to go to the GCC as soon as you bought it? No, we of course, we okay. bought it. We, uh, we moved offices. We got it from that small sweatshop office. Uh, we went into a bigger office, uh, we got a more staff, we developed a website. Of course, we didn't want to go into the GCC with the old website of Talabat. Okay. No, the old website of Talabat had a few issues. Uh, it wasn't just ugly, the, the, the interface. Okay. It was not upgradable. So, meaning I cannot really do any more with it. So we had to really to abolish it and build. And you know, sometimes you get an old building. Uh, it's better sometimes to demolish and build a new one than renovate. Mm. You, can't, you, know, you can't renovate this building anymore. So we built a new platform. And a platform that was capable to expand in a vertical manner and in a horizontal manner. Okay. So yeah. we did that. We expanded in Saudi in, if I'm not mistaken, 2011, 2012, in Bahrain, in the Emirates. Uh, and then Qatar, Oman then, then Qatar. And now we're in the GCC. Inshallah, our plan is now to take over the MENA. Inshallah. Nice. But uh, when you entered Saudi Arabia or uh, UAE, were there existing competitors? Yeah, of course. Or you were, okay. Of course. Uh, there are com I mean, there, are, there is competition in the GCC. So, uh, however, our biggest concern is not competition. Our biggest concern is how can I convince people 
uh, to order uh, not through the phone but through uh, the website or okay. through the application. Not by calling. Not by, by calling yeah. because th this is the biggest problem. How can I convince somebody who's, who knows KFC number by heart or knows Pizza Hut number by heart? I don't know them by heart, these numbers. How can I convince this guy, this guy to order through Talabat? That's the challenge. Yeah. And this is the struggle that is every single competitor in this industry is facing. Uh, and this is what we work on. There's plenty of cake for everybody to eat. So okay. this is one of the issues. The other issue is how can I uh, get the staff to believe in what I believe? Uh, because they're not, uh, they're not here. And, and you're talking about countries like Saudi Arabia. It's a very difficult country to work, to do business. Okay. I mean, uh, I, alhamdulillah, I have experience in Saudi Arabia given our, we have business in Saudi Arabia and other industries. However, it is a very difficult country. You have countries like Emirates and Bahrain, which are very good countries to do business in. Okay. So you have, really, you have people, countries like Oman, which is uh, catching up quickly now. Qatar, it's a fast country, however, it is a difficult country, fee, a lot of bureaucracies. So every country okay. is different, yeah. Okay. Nice. I hope I answered the question in the way you want. Yeah. Uh, what are your strategies for growing? So how, how do you distinguish yourself from the competition? You said you, you sponsored, for example, the Rodan yeah. uh, tournament. What are the, the things you do to grow and expand your business? We do a lot of things. I mean, we have a marketing team now. We have an online marketing team. We have a marketing team. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we are a local from the GCC. So our competition is, uh, is f some of it is from Europe. Okay. Some of it is from Turkey. Uh, and they're two heavyweights. These guys, they're huge. Mm -hmm. And no matter how big Talabat is now, uh, we are small compared to them. However, I have an advantage. I'm, this is my neighborhood. Okay. I know how it works. I know how people think here. The name Talabat is very, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, it's very appealing to people in the, in, in, yeah. in the GCC and in the Arab world, really. And it's, uh, it's one of those very common words that you say every day. Mm. Uh, that helps. It helps to sell. Yeah. Uh, and I want to just tell you a small story about the, the Talabat to the six and Talabat to the T. Now, one of the things is when we value Talabat, we discounted, the f we gave them a discount because they had the name with a six. And I said, I told Abdul Aziz, I said, Abdul Aziz, this is a major, uh, يعني, uh, there's a major risk here. The guy that owned the tea uh, can start a business called Talabat.com with a tea and cause a huge brand confusion between you and him. So why haven't you bought the, 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 the Talabat with a tea domain? Because to be honest, we can't find the guy. I said, what do you mean you can't find the guy? I said, well, we look, we just, the guy, the domain is bought by somebody, but we don't know where he is. We can't, we can't track him. He had, uh, you know, privacy and we couldn't reach. Then I remember, uh, and that was one of the things that really was, and it worried me. Yeah. Because we bought the business, it was under six, and we had no idea. Any moment, I'm just going to hear, oh, there's a business called Talabat.com with a T that is going to come up. And it could be online food delivery, it could be anything, it could be in any country, we don't know. Then I remember the business development manager came running to my office one morning. He was like, you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. I said, what? I said, I have tracked the guy who owns Talabat with a T. I said, what? Where? What's his name? He goes, the guy is in Jeddah, a Saudi guy. Oh. I said, ah, okay. And how do you track it? He goes, he activated the domain. Yeah. <laughs> So I put Talabat.com on the website and it directed to another business called Talabatically something. So Talabat was not his main domain. However, he, he had it. He owned it. Uh, and he bought it for $9.99 <laughs> back in 1999 when he was studying in America. Uh, but this was not his main domain. This was his second domain. So, so we contacted him. But I said, should I contact him and tell him I'm from Talabat? Or should I contact him and say, Iba'an, I just want to buy the domain. So I said, let's try to, uh, يعني, let's initiate a contact. I initiate a contact. قال, I'm sorry, I don't want to sell. But I said, the same thing having to beg these people to buy something. Oh. So, uh, have, have, have. He goes, okay, I want $150,000. $150,000 for a domain. I said, I'm going to give you 20. You guys are uh, taking a piss. And, uh, I don't want. I know that you guys won the domain. So how did he know it's us from Talabat to the six? He goes, uh, I'm an IT guy and I tracked you down. I said, oh, great. Uh -huh. So I said, let's meet. 
So in the end, we sell them a value of around eighty thousand dollars. طبعا why not get eighty thousand dollars for a domain? However, I would have paid a million for it if I have a million. I didn't have a million, but if I have a million, I will pay a million for it because for me, it was priceless. We already paid a lot of money for this business, so I could not afford to have someone doing another business with a talaba to the T, and I'm talaba to the six. So and he goes, I want my money in cash. So I go, shun in cash. I want guardian in. Yeah, <laughs> it's very secretive. Yeah, no, 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 no. dodgy guy. It was, no, it was, and I was like, uh, how is in cash? So I have one of my cousins. I mean, he's a lot bigger than me, a lot stronger. <laughs> and I called the lawyer. I said, guys, the guy was Allah معاه خيرا after negotiating with تعبنا بس شرط الوحيد إن يبي فلوس بكل شيء بجنطة. قال بقى قال كان كان يقول لي هذا ما ينفع. In a bag with a dollar sign. Uh, absolutely. قال لي ما ينفعش كذا. قلت له محامي قلت له ليش؟ كان يقول لي أنت money laundering وهذا قلت له ريال مراضي he doesn't want. He wants his money in cash. قلنا زين بالله عطينا كاش وراحوا طقوا ولد عمتي وطقوا المحامي وباقوا يقولوا فلوس ولا حولونا الدومين واحنا بالسعوديه واحنا بالكويت والكويت راحوا السعوديه وش لاحقهم؟ فكلمت الوالد قلت ماي فاذر سيد داد الموضوع واحد اثنين ثلاثه قال انت مينون انت قال قلت له قال قلت له والله وي هاف تو باي ذيس دومين اند ذيس از ذا برايس اند بليز دونت سي نو وي هاف تو باي ذات برايس تو جيت ذيس دومين Alhamdulillah, my father is a businessman, so I made it easy, I convinced him. And we had, so, but we did it, Alhamdulillah, we, we own a hotel in, in Riyadh. So I called the hotel manager and I told him, I, it's one, two, and three, and four. He said, are you joking or are you serious? He said, I swear I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Get me the meeting room. Put a camera in the meeting room. Get me two huge bodyguards standing <laughs> outside. Just in case they beat my cousin up and they beat my, our lawyer up, please, you, Ali, you, at least you, you catch them. So it's really like Mission Impossible kind of thing. Yeah. And we had a hidden camera in the room. They didn't know about it. I was watching it from Kuwait. And, I can, wow. <laughs> and, we, had a, and we had a cash machine. Really. We bought the bag. Cash. Counting it like the mafia, you know, mafia stuff. It's just like, just like the movies, really. Wow. Uh, it was a very difficult two hours for me because I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. Of course, they had, they were sitting on the computer like this uh, and there were three of them. One of them was counting the money with the accountant over in the cash machine. The other guy was sitting by the computer waiting to press transfer domain from him to us. Uh, a third guy they brought maybe as just yeah, their yeah, bodyguard. I, it wasn't a bodyguard kind of, but kind of nice. But just the whole thing was dodgy yeah, for me. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, and then we ended up counted it once, twice. They're happy with the money. Done. Took tr- transfer. Tawal domain to us. Thank you very much. Took their money and they we never heard of them again. Oh. From them again. <laughs> nice. We never had to use the bodyguards or. Uh, uh, but alhamdulillah, that was one of those very strange stories, but يعني, important moments for for us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm done with my questions, uh, but uh, before I hand it over to Q&A, yeah. uh, what uh, advice do you feel strong, uh, like you feel that you need to share with uh, upcoming entrepreneurs? Uh, I always wanted to be, uh, to have my own business. If you want to do your own business, you have to, first of all, my, my strong advice is get experience first. Don't make the mistake of Graduating from university and boom, doing your own business. I, I believe uh, a lot. Some people have done that and they have been very successful. Me, I, I, I believe if I didn't have that experience at the beginning, I would have failed. Mm. I would have failed miserably in the in the restaurant. I would have failed miserably in talabat. That experience really helped me. You have to uh, do this. Roll the sleeve. Oh, you have to roll up the sleeve. It must be. It has to be done. Uh, you have to treat people well and treat people fairly. Um, you have to be patient. It's very easy. Sometimes you get really annoyed. You get one guy, and you work very, very hard, and you see uh, a guy across the room or in another country uh, not giving a, يعني, a damn about the play season. You feel you want to go on, يعني, 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 yeah. and uh, يعني, I know. Uh, but it's about but keeping cool. Keep this PG, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> keeping cool. Uh, and giving people a chance, you have to give people a chance. Uh, one chance, two chance, three chance. And if someone fails after that, then you have to take the hard decision of telling somebody to, to thank you very much. It's the worst thing. And for me, uh, the worst thing is when I have to tell somebody, thank you very much, I don't need your service, uh, or somebody submitting his resignation. 
when somebody yeah. comes up to me and goes, this is my resignation, this is the one of the worst things that I face in, uh, in uh, running a business. business yeah. So well, advice is work hard, roll up your sleeve, get the experience first. Uh, if you fail once or twice, it's okay. We have all failed. Uh, it's about المثابرة and continuing uh, and continuing, continuing and believing in yourself uh, and about dedicating yourself to this business. You cannot, for example, have a job, all right, and then do a side business. If you do a side business, it will remain a side business always. If you want to make this business successful, you have to work very hard. The old owners of Talabat, Allah uh, Fagum Lish, because they were good people from here mm. and they worked very, very hard. But first, they were honest. So if you're honest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yiftaha alayk. So they were honest, uh, Allah yiftaha alayhum. They did very well, uh, made, they made a lot of money when we bought it from them. Alhamdulillah, we took it, a huge challenge. We have invested a lot of money in Talabat. Alhamdulillah, now Talabat is a, a completely different business. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Any questions from you fine people? But no awkward questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're most welcome. Yeah, sure. And thank you for the Talabat and Life Saver. I have a question. It uh, started as a Kuwaiti youth business. Do you target Kuwaiti youths for your team right now to work with you? Don't you feel I, like I, you I, I love to go for Kuwaiti youths, definitely. And, uh, because this business started as a dorm room business. Khalid Al Atabi, the founder, Allah Yerhamah Abdul Hab Al Qatami, Ahmed Al Rumi, Zaid Al Hab. These guys were students when they started Talabat. And they were transferring Talabat in the beginning, there was no system, it was by phone call. So they get the order, you would call Pizza Hut uh, and tell them, well, this is the order by phone. Really, it was like that. Our Shahar Talabat was April 2004. They got 46, sorry, 43 orders in the whole month of April 2004. 95% was from Khalid and his family. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, it was like that. Mm. However, these guys really worked very, very hard. Nas and Baf. Uh, النظيف, الله يفتح عليه. ما يلف ويدور. اللف going left and right هذا اللي اللي يعني الله يساعده. They were good people, honest people. They treated people well, uh, and they made. They have really done well. يعني they, they take a lot of the credit, not me. They take it. So do you hire Kuwaitis or not? Uh, definitely, of course. Uh, <laughs> the talents. We are we're always on the lookout for talents. People that work, treat this business. As if it's their own. How it's very rare, but of course we're always on the lookout. Um, how do you maintain your uh, high work ethic from like a young age? Like, don't you ever suffer from burnout or, of course, um, or, like getting exhausted, over exhausted, or overworking yourself? Like, how do you maintain your high work ethic throughout mm. all these years? Keeping control of this. You have to keep control of this. How do you keep control of this? Uh, is uh, control of this. El iman, as a as a human, you have to know your place in this earth. And we're all here. We're gonna live few years and then we're gonna die and then the real life starts afterwards if you're good you'll go to heaven if you're bad you go to hell so what can I do in my time on this earth uh, alhamdulillah I come from a family that our work ethic to them is, uh, is a priority and I was since an early age I was brought up to see to see uh, people work very very hard my grandfather Allah Yerham, used to wake up at five o'clock every morning uh, and work that's uh, even when he became wealthy mm. he still worked as if he was a poor man Mm. So, uh, because he liked working. Yeah. Uh, my father, Allah Yatawal Umrah, he is the same. Uh, so, I learned from them, I learned from them, yani, uh, working. Uh, getting, uh, being in a boarding school in the UK really, really helped me. Uh, it was very difficult. I was in a boarding school in Buckinghamshire, in the middle of nowhere. The closest town was 40 miles away. Uh, Homesick. Oh. This is when I saw you back in November 1992, 1993. Uh, it was, however, yani, uh, working and living with people from Europe really helped me. Because, especially in the UK, because the UK, Anna, to me, is the best country in the world. Why is it the best country in the world? It's because there is a huge, there's a lot of value to the human being. So when I went there, Anna, they didn't know where I was from. So they said, are you, oh, I remember this guy came up to me, he goes, uh, on my first day, he goes, are you a Paki? Mm. I'm sorry, well, what's a Paki? <laughs> hey, can you go to a Pakistani? He goes, no, 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 I'm from Kuwait. Can you go, where is Kuwait? He goes, where is Kuwait? 
الكويت ان اريبيا جولف كان يقول لي اه كامل كامل يس قلت يس يس كامل سو ذي وير فيري اغنورنت هاوفر اي كويكلي انتجريتد انتو ذير سوسايتي لان شفت انهم اوادم يعني ذي دينت كير وات كلر اي واز And to them, I was dark. And Kuwait and Abiyah, they grew in Abiyah. They never. To them, Nak, they were blonde and blue eyes, and uh, uh, and they were from the all the top families. Yeah, in boarding school, only top families go to boarding school there because it's very expensive. However, they didn't care what nationality I was really. Uh, they cared about whether I was a good person or not. So ethics is very important, and they give value to a human being. I learned wise many shahadi. I learned a lot of that from from living in England. Uh, A huge culture shock, طبعاً, when I moved back to Kuwait at, uh, in the year 2004. So that helped me to uh, to take work as a priority in my life. Hope I answered the yeah, question. Yeah, no. Perfect. Excellent. You're welcome. Any questions? Uh, so similar to the question that you just had, I completely agree. I think your upbringing really shapes you as a person. Of course. Once you go into the business world. Because I think especially in Kuwait and the GCC region, yeah. we have a bit of an epidemic. We come from, mashallah, very religious backgrounds, but maybe not all families would have their children clean bathrooms or milk cows and things like yeah. this. But dealing with all these different people once you got into uh, Golabat and uh, corporate banking and Gulf Bank, did you feel like that upbringing really influenced like, your work ethic, how hard you worked, what, uh, You can say that there wasn't that big of a difference. Like, did it give you a competitive edge when well, you compare yourself well, to other well, people? To, to be honest, um, whoever says, well, people in the UK are smarter than people in Kuwait, I'm sorry to say, is a moron or an idiot. They're not. However, what, they're, what's, what are they good at in Europe? Is that they are very ethical, they respect time, Time is very, very important. He, and, and unfortunately, not only in Kuwait, in the Middle East, nobody gives a, a damn about time. <laughs> you know, this is one of the issues, problems yeah. we have here. Uh, and there is respect for people. They, they have respect for animals. Yeah. If you kill an animal, you're in trouble. Um, yeah. I had a neighbor once, he was from Yemen, and he, was, he had a dog, and he was abusing it, and he was put him uh, in prison. And to hear you abuse people, and you, you get away with it. So uh, the, the, these people had ethics. However, working in corporate banking, Gulf Bank, Alhamdulillah, I was very fortunate because the environment there was very good. Mm. So, like I said, Kuwaiti people are very smart. They're not smarter than us in any way whatsoever. And the original Kuwaiti people are very smart also, are, are, are super smart. They built Kuwait. I mean, Kuwait was houses of mud and all that. The golden age of Kuwait was built by who? By the Kuwaitis. احنا اخر فتره تلخبطنا uh, because we got complacent and uh, we got lazy we took things for granted and if you take things for granted you uh, you end up you end up going down so in Gulf Bank I met a lot of good people a lot of people with ethics uh, of course when I went into corporate banking I had no I had no idea how banking works I studied economics which is different than banking however I started from level zero I rolled up my sleeve Uh, given that I had studied in the UK, of course, that helped me because the education level is very high in the, and also graduating with an economics uh, from a good university in the UK is, was very tough for me. It wasn't easy. By the time that I graduated, uh, got a good grade. So, but I saw myself in the Kuwaiti who are with me, who are in the bank, the same thing. All of them are from from America and all of them are shatar. And I wasn't really a star out of them. Relax. Uh, I wasn't better than them in any way. However, Uh, and that helped me also. Like I said, there are a lot of good people in Kuwait. However, it's sometimes you think, well, uh, because you see what goes on, you think there's no one, but there are. So yeah. I wasn't, I hope that answered your question. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. For example, what type of systems do you put in place after you acquire in terms of uh, structure and performing uh, structure and how things work? And um, my second question is, apart from Talabat, are you looking at different businesses now, or just you're constantly on growing, growing the Talabat platform? Um, to answer the, uh, the first question, what systems, of course, when we bought Talabat, 
um, a small office, you know, a kind of a sweatshop kind of an environment. So you can imagine there was no system. There was no, of course, they had the Talabat system. Yeah. However, it was very basic. Uh, it wasn't something يعني, extremely basic, actually, with a lot of bugs, a lot of issues. And still, by the way, uh, still our system needs a lot of improvement. And we're not perfect. Uh, however, uh, we are better than where we were before. And inshallah, after six months, we'll be better than where we are now, yeah. and so on and so forth. So a lot of systems were uh, put in place. Uh, it's about getting systems now for other departments, like, like finance, like HR. We uh, were with good people uh, who helped us to get those systems and upgrade, and we are in the process of getting those. Because now Talabat employs um, over 140 staff members in six countries, so now we have to have systems. We have to have a good HR system. Yeah. So we went and we purchased uh, a very good uh, system from Microsoft Dynamics for HR and for our finance. We're working on it. Shall soon these systems will be uh, rolled out. Uh, we are in the process of upgrading our uh, operation uh, platform to make life for restaurants easy. At the moment, uh, I'm sure you want a lot of things from me, which I'm not giving you. But inshallah soon you will see a lot of things that uh, I will be giving you to make your experience better. And plus making the user's experience better. So all this is working. Uh, we're working on that. And it's a continuous uh, development. Can you just say the second question again, please? Uh, sorry, just to... Uh, yeah. yeah. Now this uh, is uh, sorry, but just, just to be clear, uh, the first question you meant uh, IT systems or you meant uh, actual policies in running the company? I meant the structure when you answered. Okay. Yeah. Uh, of course, policies. Uh, he uh, joined us uh, and he helped uh, helped me understand the importance of policies in a business. Yeah. Uh, and we set these policies. Now, however, it's setting a policy is one thing. That's quite easy, actually. The question is, how do you make people follow this policy? And if people don't follow this policy, what are you going to do about it? That's the difficult part. So uh, as the business grows, you have to have systems. You can't run it like a baqala. A baqala would work for a small business with a few people. However, with Talabat is still considered a small company, by the way. And 140 people is, is uh, small. Mm. Uh, however, Inshallah, within the next four months, will be a lot better in terms of systems than now. We do have systems at the moment. However, the new systems are a lot better than the uh, the current ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The second part of the question, uh, Gal, uh, what do you do? Any other business? Do? Are you thinking yes. of pursuing any? Uh, if I would do another business, Talabat would fail. Now, I have to dedicate 100% every single day to Talabat for me to have a chance at success. Mm. Uh, I mean, right now, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Talabat was 700 orders per day when we bought it. Now we are over 15,000 orders per day, Alhamdulillah. Seven people, 140 people. Uh, we're in about to hit 1 million downloads for our application. Mm. Now, these are Alhamdulillah good numbers. When yeah. I look at them, I, I feel very proud. However, I believe this is just the beginning still. What's going to come up, inshallah, is going to be a lot more than now. My aim is how to turn this Kuwaiti business that started as a dorm room business into a multinational business representing Kuwait. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get there But there's a lot of work that's been done for this time. So it's dedicating to yourself, to one business, is a must of success. You cannot do two things and expect to succeed in two things. Yeah, sir. Hey, yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, how was it in the beginning uh, explaining an online concept to, and when you're dealing with Wazarat, with Chidi, and how does that work? How do you explain online to them? It's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, يعني, you look at the other things that are not known. If you say, Ibn Halal, then come and see what and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, at the moment we have three floors. Each floor is a 350 square meters. So we have over a thousand square meters of office space. It's not, it's not, it's not small. Uh, why do you want to give me six people? I have 140 oh. people. I need to transfer their residencies. So it's about, this is the struggle where you, we, we, unfortunately we have in Kuwait. Other GCC countries are more advanced than us. However, Kuwait is not the worst, by the way, Tara. It's not the worst in the GCC. 
<laughs> I don't want to tell you who is the worst, but there are difficult countries in the GC. Saudi is very difficult. Qatar is very bureaucratic. However, they are good. They are better than Kuwait in things, and Kuwait is, is better than things. However, if you look at countries like Bahrain and Emirat, no, they are way ahead. Way ahead. In Bahrain, I have uh, everything is online. I don't mm. need to go and wait in a queue. In, in the Emirates, everything is online. In Kuwait, you have to know people to get things done. Mm. This is the difference. And this is very, very problematic. Uh, what can we do? We just have to live with it and uh, do our best. Uh, I would like to just to talk about um, why a lot of people in Kuwait uh, have yamshi because they know people or they bribe people and all that. I'm completely against such things. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah wafagna team that really we are getting our things done the right way without having to give a, a, a cut easy to this guy or giving a phone to this guy but doing things in the right way. It will take longer. However, I believe in uh, this is the right way to do. You have to work in that way. You have to work in the right way. بشي يرضي الله سبحانه وتعالى أنه ما تلف الدور ففي ناس بالكويت زينة تشتغل بالوزارات that appreciate this so not everybody in the ministries is bad there's a lot of bad however there are some good so it's about finding this good and uh, trying to uh, you know uh, exactly yeah. you're welcome any more questions so. It can be franchised, however, um, no one has done it before in the industry of online food ordering because it is a complicated business. There's a lot of functions in this business. Uh, one critical bug could put you down okay. and you could be down for an hour, for two hours. Uh, so franchising a business like Talabat is very difficult, however, it can be. It is franchisable. Alhamdulillah, uh, I mean, the owners of Talabat uh, didn't want any shareholders. So we can do it ourselves. We have the funding to do it ourselves. So let's do it ourselves. So they went and we, we to do it ourselves. Doing it yourself uh, and is good so that you don't have to have to worry about someone else every time. So being in a partnership is very difficult. Yani, and uh, his first ever business was a partnership. We ended up losing his friend, Ala Business. Mm. But do things yourself. Don't get people with you. And sometimes friends is friends, a brother is a brother. So you brothers fight over money. Yeah. You fight with your sister over money. You fight with your cousin over money. Sometimes having something your own uh, is a lot better. Now, but then you get the problem of funding. Then where am I going to get the money to start? You start small. And this is what the owners of Talabah did. They started small with a paid up capital of, I think, of uh, 4,000 kids. 4,000, yeah. 4,000 dinar, uh, Bell Show. But let's turn the question to the kitchen field. Yeah. Uh, would you franchise or would you open it? Uh, the kitchen, Anna, at one point in time, because Anna, my brother is here with me in this room, and uh, uh, my brother was, I'm eight years older than my brother. So at one point in time, I was in charge of Talabat and of our other company that owns restaurants like the kitchen and other restaurants and to be honest I did a miserable job really I did a very bad job for the restaurants and the reason I did very, a very bad job for the restaurants is not because I don't know how to run restaurants it's because Talabat took so much of my time that I was giving my leftover time to this mm. so I told Mubarak I said Mubarak Habibi uh, it's Mubarak loves burgers by the way mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, now five restaurants so he took over one, and now he made it into five. And this is within a year and a half, less than a year and a half. Yeah. So uh, inshallah, yani, I, I expect a very big future, inshallah. Uh, he took over the kitchen and dedicated himself to the, to the kitchen and other four other restaurants. Uh, just like I dedicate myself, wallah fatah ali. Can the kitchen be franchisable? Yes, he is definitely working on it. Do you prefer uh, to open it yourself or franchise it? Yeah. When it comes to restaurants, Franchise and restaurants, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, they go together. Okay. There's a lot of experience in the industry uh, with these two industries, uh, franchising and uh, restaurants. They know how it's there. It's easy uh, to do it. 
franchising and a business like Talabat, yes, it is franchisable, but no one has done it before. The reason has why no one has done it before is because people, the leading people in the industry believe it will fail. It cannot work due to the complexity of the uh, of the such a business. Restaurants, on the other hand, no, there is there is no how in the market. So I believe definitely yes, he is planning to an openings. I'm sure he will sooner or later try to franchise it. Um, I feel like one of the biggest challenges when it comes to like any project or business is sustainability after the CEO or the management uh, team like leaves. So, what is your strategy when it comes to making sure that your project is sustainable after you are done? This is an amazing question. No, yes, this is the struggle which I. It's awesome to ask that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is the struggle. Which every business owner feels like this. If I die tomorrow, what will happen? Will this business crash or will it carry on? Now, if a business is depending on one person, it's not a business. Simple as that. Uh, a business has to depend on a group of individuals that are honest and hardworking and that are who want and believe this is their own business. Now, if you look at the West, in Europe and the States, they've catched up to, on to this m many years ago. So you see, you see companies, they IPO, and then once they IPO and they go and they start to give stocks to their best staff. Now, why do they do that? They do that because they want to retain them. So they go to the best guy, you're the best guy, so in that department, and I want to keep you happy. I don't want you to think of leaving Talabatan or leaving this business, so here you go. You're an owner now. At the same time, you are a, a manager. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of my dream things to do. I want to hit Talabat into that arena and then go to my best talent and say, guys, thank you very much because it wasn't Muhammad Jafar who took Talabat to this, uh, where it is right now. It is the team that took Talabat. Uh, so it's about going to them and say, thank you very much, gentlemen. Here you go. There are, you're, all of you now are owners in this business. Because, again, I worry about always my best team. Am I going to lose them? Are they going to leave me? Uh, are they happy? Because it's a team business. It's about keeping the best people and holding on to them. So sometimes money is not everything. Sometimes people do leave you for things not related to money. So it's about how to convince them to work with you and believe what you believe. Inshallah, I'll give you Thank you very much, Mohammed. Yes. Did uh, someone ever hack uh, Alabama? Yes. Find yes. a hole in the product you. Huh? Find a hole, Mr. Sim, and the product you. Uh, can you tell us a story? About yes, of course, I can yeah. tell you a story. Yeah. My first ever hack was that feeling of hacking and website and e business. It's the worst, it's the, it's the worst word, really, you can hear. Uh, however, the first person to hack Talabat was right after we bought it. Oh, this guy was actually he hacked it but he said my name is Flan Flani this is my telephone number and I'm telling you that you have a weakness in Talabat mm. I advise you to fix this weakness because you may get an evil so and so so and so I'm not going to say the swear word now mm. who will crash your business طبعا انا قاعد اقرا الايميل مخترع قلت وات ذا هيل از ذس طبعا ذاك الوقت ها؟ اثيكال هاكر يا سو كيوت لا لا فا اي واز لايك سو اي واز لايك ريدينغ ات مو مصدق يجي نشف هارت ويتس واحد بدا يعرق بدا يتوحق بوت ذا هذا يا حبيبي كم ان كويكلي ايفري ون لوك ات لوك وات اي ريسيفد هاف ان اور ليتر he tried it. Mm. He tried what he wanted to do and took the business down for 46 minutes. Wow. Okay. Taban, he, that guy, Anna he did me a favor because he woke us up of a huge problem we had. And that was the moment where we started to invest a lot in technology. And by the way, no matter how much you invest in technology, you will get people who can find a way to hack you. The CIA can get hacked. Best companies, Google, can get hacked. However, so no matter how much money you throw, and we spend thousands and thousands of KD every month on security, however, 
It's about having contingency plan. What happens if this happens? Where do you pick up it up? So on and so forth. So we are living under the rahmat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No matter how much you spend. Was it a Kuwaiti guy? Yes, it was a Kuwaiti guy. The second time we got hacked was by that Chinese guy, and this guy was an evil, evil man, and he hacked us while I was in London. I remember I told him I was in London for a meeting there. Next thing I know, I got a call from our IT manager. He's like, Mr. Muhammad. I said, what? I said, we were attacked. And of course, he said, we were attacked. I said, one had dashed on the book and took them. That's what I thought. I'm like, did you call the police? He goes, no, Mr. Muhammad. He said, what? I said, we got hacked. I'm like, ham, nafs al hsas hada, al hsas li li udik tiger, yani, al tabliq fi. And this guy took us down for 12 hours. He was very evil, that guy. And uh, an, an expert, because we had a lot of good security back then, good security, and he managed to take us down. But he was the same guy that took not only Talabat down, he took the best websites in the GCC down at the same time. Oh. It was for a period of 12 hours, and the best websites, Bil Khalij, went down all at the same time. Oh. So he targeted the best websites, Talabat was one of them, and boom, he attacked it. He went on a live chat, guys. Give me X amount of money and I will have that. طبعا what we did what so in hazat we went and quickly we contacted one of those one of the best professional companies in the states. He gave us a DOS attack, a denial of service. So we went to them and we ended up paying them. عرفوا إنه we're desperate so we paid them a lot of money to and to do the to do the setup and how that took twelve hours. So for twelve hours. It was one of those very difficult moments of my life. قاعد أنا طبعاً ماكو سبب ما سبيته بقلبي ماكو هذا بس الحمد لله رب العالمين شوف تعلمنا وايد. So if we were spending this much on security, we started to spend this much on security. So it's about keep spending on security. It's and again, it's not guarantee. There's no guarantee. Any moment it could happen. However, the question is, if it happens, are you? Do you have a contingency plan for it? Alhamdulillah, now we are more ready than before. So, yeah. final question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, another thing I was thinking of is uh, businesses that are also like they want to take the method. You have a lot of restaurants that sign up for your uh, for talabat and yeah. Yeah, method, uh, the companies that manage a lot of retail food restaurants, if they're planning on making, and I'm sure one is planning on making its own. Uh, so basically, if you're talking about if a restaurant wanted to do his own or online or a conglomerate with a lot of restaurants, yani like one of the big companies in Kuwait and the GCC, and planning their own version of talabat, how does that factor into your? You see, every business has competition. There's no business which you're the only one, and we have competition. Our competition in in the GCC are huge. However. We are from the GCC. We know, alhamdulillah, we know how the GCC works. We know how people think. So it's easier for us to get to them than them. Alhamdulillah, Talabat is the biggest in the GCC. Alhamdulillah. But in terms of sizes of companies, we're the smallest. But in terms of orders, the registrations, downloads, we are, alhamdulillah, we are number one. What makes uh, you think that you're number one over them? Like, what is it about you guys that? Um, we are number one because Alhamdulillah, so far we're number one, and I hope we remain to be number one. Uh, we are from this part of town. Uh, we work with ethics. Well, but success doesn't come because CEO works hard. Because uh, you have a team that works hard. This is all secondary. The primary thing is working with honesty. You work in an ethical way. Because success comes from God. It doesn't come from you. Until you do your best. And sometimes you fail. I have failed before. It's normal, but because how can I succeed? For you to succeed, you have to. As in tasaddaq, I will say, you have to help people who are in need. This will bring a lot of success into your life, by the way. Success in all kinds of things, business and family. Number two, it's about treating your customers well. And how can I? How can I? Anna, يعني compensate. هذا إحنا as طلبات, I'm sure we've all experienced it. I sometimes experienced. I طلب أنا. ساعة ساعة ونص ما يأكل أدش على لايف شات وينه يطلع لي واحد يبط شبدي ما أدق على طلبات إذن يبتابع معاي يدق على المطعم 
اوكي اون ذا ويز ليش ما دقيت علي لو دقايل اف يو تول مي يو غانا بي ليت اور فور فروم اذر ريستورانت افري داي وي فيس ذس هيديك ذا كويشن از وات وات دو يو دو اباوت ات هاو دو اي كول ذوز كاستمرز اند لوك افتر ذيم ذس ويل جيف يو ري يعني تو ريتين بيبل تو يوز ذا ويب سايت اند اتس اباوت بينج اثيكال اند دوينج ثينجز ان ذا رايت واي In life, especially in in in, in nowadays, you there's a lot of temptations in life to to go left and right. However, if you keep going straight, and you're ethical, the blessing comes from up. This is this is the and then secondary is you work hard and, <laughs> and all that. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed yeah, Jaffer, and uh, thank you. Uh, I did that with the CEO, the customer, and all that. So I have a little suggestion. Of course, then. Um, could you? create the, the part of the app where we could just type in the food type I want and then it will tell me what restaurants I have. So that's something that I always have a craving for, let's say, yeah, a burger craving or a stomach craving. And Absolutely. I can always the restaurant that I'm ordering from. So I go to Tienda Jones and I say, okay, I want this one. Well, what's your favorite restaurant? Um, I love Tienda. Very good. Uh, of course, this is a very good suggestion. With, and as you guys know, we keep updating our service and we keep launching new products. This is one of the things we are, which we are working on. And inshallah. Uh, it will يعني, be there, uh, inshallah. To basically sh- quickly shortlist and pinpoint what you feel like. I feel like a spaghetti today. Mm. I feel like a spaghetti bolognese. Okay. Spaghetti, and then gives you all that. Yeah. So, inshallah, that's something we are. Uh, okay. Inshallah. Yes. I'm going to go to the next one. Your Never make the mistake of opening a business and say this business is small. Because it's small, I should get juniors. Because juniors are less expensive. That's the worst thing you can do. If you believe that this business will be successful, you have to, from day one, get the best people possible. Of course, in the beginning, what will happen? You will have a lot of costs and no income. However, with these team, and it's all about the team here, you will be able to uh, success. I, one of the things I learned from you, Yani, uh, I'll have the craft. Okay, uh, thank you very much all for coming and thank you f- for sharing your experiences with thank us. Thank you for inviting me, it's my pleasure. Uh, uh, please uh, check out the Startup Grind. For th- they have a list of uh, videos from other uh, experts in different cities and you can uh, be part of that community. Uh, also, if you're interested in setting up a tech startup, we have a startup boot camp starting next week on Sunday. Uh, it's, yes, over there. Uh, it's for people who have an idea, just an idea, no experience in uh, IT, uh, and we help you determine whether the idea is worth pursuing or not by doing customer validation. So you ask people the right questions to find out if they're interested in your idea or not, how to design the app, how to tackle each business component, uh, and then to set up a landing page where you get people to express their interest And when, once you launch your tech startup, at least you have a, a crowd that's interested in, in the startup itself. So if you're interested, please register on this um, link. Thank you very much and free to mingle. Allah <laughs> <laughs>